Okay, welcome everyone. We're so grateful that you're with us this evening. I'm Bob Carlton with College Match Point. And this is Lisa Bain Carlton with College Match Point. We're eager to talk with you this evening. We appreciate you taking your time out of a busy day. I know that for many of you, this might be the fifth, sixth, or even seventh Zoom of the day. Um, and so we wanna respect your time, but we also wanna make sure that we're able to answer as many questions as we have. <clears throat> we appreciate those of you that shared your questions before. You can simply add them to us in the chat box here at Zoom. Some of the questions are very specific and personal, so we'll definitely be available to follow up one-on-one. -on -one. But what we're hoping to do this evening is give you an overview of the admissions process from the University of Texas at Austin. Now, um, first off, as I said, we'd like to welcome you. We hope you and your families are all doing well. We hope your students have adjusted or are adjusting to a schedule that they never imagined would be part of their spring. Um, and we know that for many of you, this has meant juggling working from home, having high school and younger students at home. And we also want to send our thoughts to all of you who are first responders, or for those of you that have family members who are um, struggling in any way, shape, or form. So we'd like to welcome you this evening. And many of you know College Match Point, but we would just want to give you a little context. Um, Lisa started College Match Point 11 years ago, and since that time, we've worked with students um, who've applied to the University of Texas. In any given year, 55 to 65 percent of the students that we work with apply at the University of Texas for a variety of reasons. They're here in Austin, it's a wonderful value, or many of you are Longhorns and your students have always imagined they go to the 40 acres. The majority of students that we work with aren't auto admit, and it is a great joy for us to run into students from the University of Texas that we've worked with. So with that as a context, Lisa will jump in and start through, um, we presented the, the presentation this evening in sections. Lisa and I will alternate and we'll try to keep up with your questions as they come in. And then any of the questions that we haven't been able to cover We'll try to wrap up at the end, but Lisa? Hi, everybody, and as Bob said, welcome. We're so glad you're here, and we're excited to talk to you about the University of Texas because we really love helping kids apply to the University of Texas. Now, obviously, as Bob you know, alluded to a minute ago, we're in an unusual time, and one of the things we noticed from many of your questions was concerns about how COVID-19 is going to affect admissions at the University of Texas. I wish I could tell you I have a ton of information on that. We don't have a lot of information. I think probably one of the most asked questions we received was, do we anticipate UT going test optional or not? I'm gonna give you an answer you don't like, which is, we don't know. Um, right now they have not, they, are, they say they're continuing to watch and see the availability of testing, like how, easy is it for students to access taking an SAT or an ACT? I think that's something that we'll have a much better idea of in June, July, something like that. So sadly, we can't answer that question. However, there are some things going on that I want you guys to know about. Bob had a um, slide up just a minute ago. UT is offering virtual information sessions. So we can't go to our campuses right now, but many of the colleges, not just UT, are offering virtual sessions so that you're getting the same session if you had gone and visited the college. And I really, some of you may say, oh, my kids know UT, they've been in Austin. But what we know when we sit with the kids is that they often don't know that much about it. They don't know about the academic programs. So a good place to start in terms of exploring UT um, and learning more about it from the university standpoint um, is on these virtual sessions. And Bob and I are both huge fans of the admissions team at UT. They do a wonderful job of answering questions. They're pretty darn transparent. So I really encourage you to have your students sign up for one of those because I think that's one way to stay current right now while we're in this moment. The other thing that we do know is that the university has said that they have not decided whether they'll go back for fall semester and that they'll make that decision at the end of June. 
Other than that, we're really not going to spend a lot of time focusing on COVID because there's so much that I want you guys to learn about admissions at the University of Texas because many of us went to college many, many years ago. And so this is going to kind of, this is one of those sessions where it kind of blows your mind of, of how many steps there are in it and how important they are. So I really want us to spend our time focusing on that because I think it's going to help you students on here. It's going to help you guys kind of understand what you can do in what we call holistic admissions. So let's start there. UT is a huge university. Many people think that it's just your test scores and your grades, and that's how they pick it. That could not be further from the truth. UT will read everything you send. They really will. And you have an incredible opportunity in holistic admissions, which means your resume, your essays, your grades, your test scores, all those things are gonna fit together in a mosaic to make the picture of you as an applicant, okay? Now, why do we think that's such a great opportunity? Because you can maybe shine in one place where you couldn't shine as much somewhere else. So the many steps that UT asks for actually are to the student's advantage. If it's just grades and test scores, there's no way to show the unique side of you. And while I know people out there are skeptical, we've done hundreds, probably thousands of UT applications um, and they actually, this stuff matters. I, I, we know that. So I just want to kind of set the stage that holistic admissions, and when we will go through all the pieces of an application, is, is a real deal. And it really ultimately should be seen as a positive. And I personally am excited that we live in a state and have a university that still um, will, will do that. I think it's, it's fantastic. Now, a couple of things that came out in the questions that I think would be helpful to, I realize some of you had kids go through college and you know these things, so I'm going to kind of try to hit the middle here, but the applications come into the admissions department, not to the engineering department or the communications department or the biology department. And this is often confusing to people. So it's the admissions department that is reviewing your student. There's a few select programs where those applications get sent out to the department, but that's the exception. So oftentimes people are confused by that. So all the applications are going into a central place being read by thousands of readers all over the country. And, and they're, they're typically read by multiple readers. And so it isn't being like, oh, if I go here, I'm being evaluated by this department. Now, there are different things they're looking for by major, which Bob will get to when he talks about fit to major. So in holistic, in, when you're thinking of holistic review, you're thinking of all the pieces of the application. And that's going to include a student's transcript, which is a record of their grades, the two student's test scores, the resume, which is what we call an expanded resume, which we'll talk about, the essays, and then any other special things about the student, okay? So that's what's going to be encapsulated in that holistic review. Anything you wanna add, Bob? Uh, Lisa, there are a couple of things that people have asked to clarify in the whole holistic sure. review. I think the first one is, how does the UT holistic review differ at all from other colleges or universities that use a holistic review? Well, we don't see a lot of large universities using this much, a holistic review. So I would say the difference is you see, when we tend to think of holistic review, we tend to think to mid-sized to smaller colleges. And then the other thing I would say, and Bob's gonna hit on this, but is major, 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 major. Like this thing has to line, your, your whole application is partially a case for a major. So I think that's different from some colleges. And then the second thing I would say, and someone asked this in a question, what, would, what, do you, what are the characteristics of a UT student? And I would say um, independent, um, obviously intelligent, but also a leader. I, I think leadership really needs to come through too. And we see that that is a piece of the holistic process at UT that is really big. 
Lisa, now, two, Lisa, two other questions that have come up about the UT holistic process. Um, one is that the parent is, is sharing that their student has said, yeah, I've heard all about that holistic review thing, but it's all about I'm an auto admit or it's all about I don't have the test scores and there's no way I'm getting in. Well, that's a perfect opening to talking about the trends that we saw this year, I think. Um, and so I would say to the student that that's actually not the experience we're seeing. Um, we saw a wider range of test scores this year than we have seen in years, like a very, very wide range of test scores into the low 20s. So, and, and the, obviously these were not auto admits. So I think why might a student who had a lower test score get in? Because something else was shining on their application. Now, I don't wanna give false hope. If, if on all, if the student hasn't done activities, their grades aren't very good, their test scores aren't very good, they're probably not a, a real good candidate. But UT is one of those places where it really does, that whole package comes together and your essays can do it. You know, there's a lot of different places. Now you can't make up for, you know, a transcript of all C's or something like that. I'm not, I'm not, it's not pie in the sky, but it definitely isn't just grades and test scores. So in terms of trends that we saw this year, we saw overall a much wider range of test scores and what felt like and what we've kind of gotten a little confirmation of, a little less focus on test scores outside of those most competitive majors. And I wanna highlight that. Whenever we're talking about competitive majors tonight, the main ones we're talking about, engineering, computer science, um, nursing and business are, and then I would say natural sciences, which I'll talk about in the trends. So when we get into the competitive majors, then the test scores become more important. But we did overall for the whole university see some real shifting there. The other thing I would say we saw the competitive majors got more competitive. So the, those majors I just mentioned got harder to get in. Now, we still had multiple kids get in who were not auto admits in, in all those majors. So the vast majority, we have quite a lot of students that get into UT, very few of them are in the top 6%. So there is this kind of word on the street that the only way you can get in to these majors is if you are in the top 6% and that's actually inaccurate. You're going to have to have all the stuff to be a good candidate, but you don't necessarily have to be in the top 6%. The final thing we saw this year was a really hard hit on the natural sciences. And now with COVID, I'm really curious how this is gonna play out because one of the trends we're seeing with students overall is that they wanna think out past the four years. They wanna to go to med school or they wanna be a lawyer and they wanna talk about that versus what they wanna do in the four years. So we had a lot of pre-med students applying into natural sciences and they just got flooded and all these kids are applying to biology, but they're not talking about what they wanna do with biology in those four years. They're talking too far out. So one of the things that with this large influx right now of students who are pre-med is how, how to articulate that and possibly what major is really the right choice major. But that was a trend we saw is that natural sciences for the first time popped pretty hard um, you know, as a, as, a, as a more difficult major than it had been in the past. Overall, I think we thought that the year um, was super positive and we saw really stellar results and a lot of, you know, really positive surprises. I guess my final comment kind of in the trends holistic admissions is that when you're dealing with a university as large as the University of Texas, there's always going to be decisions that make you scratch your head. And we spend so much time hearing, well, it wasn't fair because this one got in, but this one didn't. This is a huge system with thousands of readers. So to, there, one does have to expect that it isn't error free. Uh, and, I, and I think that that is hard to swallow, especially if that ends up, you know, you're a student, now you do have the ability to appeal and there's a process, but, Overall, the system works pretty darn well. I think sometimes, uh, and Bob will really talk about this, what it takes to get into the University of Texas though, in terms of the fit to major and the resume is not inconsequential. So it requires 
a lot of work on the part of the student to get there. Bob? Yeah, Lisa, one of the questions that has come up is um, uh, last year the, the parent asked that there was a change in letters of recommendation as part of the holistic review. And in terms of trends, did you see any impact or any change in the role of letters of rec in the holistic review? No, I would say overall UT is a little different than other schools. Um, they, UT loves personal stories. They, they want to know they're admitting these kids who are good people and leaders. And so I think the rep that works well for UT is often, you know, people tend to want to have like everyone in Austin knows a faculty member. That's not your best rep. Someone who can actually speak to the student, the student's character and academic ability. Sometimes the teacher isn't the best, depending on where the student goes to school. With the big public schools, sometimes the recs can be a little bit impersonal just because the teachers have so many to write. So I would say a personal rec, but I didn't, I don't think that impacted things. The, I, I think there's enough other stuff in the package that, no, I don't think that was an impact. Great. Okay. I know additional questions will come in as we talk through the components of the holistic review, but we're now going to talk about fit to major. And I know a number of you that are on this webinar have, um, have in the past um, joined us either for a webinar or read our ebook on the importance of college major. And I think um, uh, UT has had a slogan in the past, what starts here changes the world. I wouldn't say that their emphasis on fit to major has changed the world, but it's made an impact on college admissions at other schools because UT is very specifically focused on how a student fits to her or his first choice major. That's a technical term in the Apply Texas application that says, what major are you listing as your first choice? And what major are you listing as your second choice? Now at the University of Texas at Austin, there are 170 majors and they are spectacular. They have been innovative. Um, this past year, we spotlighted five different sort of hidden gem majors across um, the campus. And they've been really some of the first schools to embrace interdisciplinary and design thinking. But as Lisa mentioned, the thing to understand is that the most competitive majors, what University of Texas describes as impacted majors, where there are substantially more students applying for the seats in those classrooms than they ever can admit. Um, the university has decided to place a greater emphasis on fit to major. And as Lisa mentioned, you can almost think about the entire holistic application from the student as a case for fit to major. Now, that can be um, challenging for some students and confusing for some parents as they guide their students through the process. So let's take that apart and talk a little bit about what that means for a junior or a sophomore or even a freshman. For a junior, the first question is, how does your major fit to your resume? And in a minute, we'll talk a little bit about what UT thinks of as your resume. The easiest way to describe it is for the more competitive majors, the University of Texas at Austin would like to know that you know what you're getting into, that you've taken the initiative, you've translated your interest in a major into activities, oftentimes outside of the classroom, that have reduced the risk that you'll transfer like a pinball all across the 40 acres, uh, that you'll change majors from Cockrell to McCombs to Moody, which is almost impossible. But so what they're trying to look for is that you've reduced the risk of that major change and that you've shown that you know what it's like to be a mechanical engineer. You know what it's like to be a computer scientist or a business person. The thing that we always say to students when they're considering major at UT is, is your desire to be a Longhorn or is your desire to be an engineer or to be a biologist? And the reason we state it that way is that for some students, they are UT or bust. Now, that doesn't mean that they get a get out of jail free card, that they somehow don't need a resume that communicates who they are. But it does mean that their major choice may be much less of an emphasis for the student. Now, let's talk about that fit to major in terms of um, 
what sometimes students and parents say to us as I can game the system. I know I can't get into Macombs, so I'll go to Moody or I'll go to Econ. Uh, two things to know about that. First, uh, the University of Texas has a great data set of applications and they can see the trends. So um, we always say to students that your best shot of getting into a school like Cockrell or Macombs is as an incoming freshman. Um, there are no back doors or side doors. But the second thing is, um, I was on a phone call yesterday with a student who said, I think I should just be an English major, which I think is a fabulous major, except the student has no interest in spending four years studying English. So we encourage students to look at their own interest and initiative and to communicate that and match that to a major. There are two questions that often come up from students. The first one is, seriously, I don't know what I want to major in. Now, there are two versions of that student. I can't decide between one or two majors, or there's a whole host of majors at UT, and I've been involved in a lot of different places. I need help deciding. The University of Texas is really innovative in having a two-year program, a freshman, sophomore year program, called undergraduate studies. Now, the interesting thing to understand is you're still read in terms of how you fit to undergraduate studies, UGS. Are you a student with broad interest who has still taken initiative? Um, University of Texas, as a last note, has a wonderful resource called Wayfinder. Uh, we encourage students that we work with to use it to research majors, not just at the University of Texas at Austin, but across all schools. I wanna reinforce, if you take nothing away from this webinar this evening, fit to major is the hook that an application is oftentimes hung on, okay? Now, I mentioned before this idea of an expanded resume, and I will say to all the parents on this call who are used to reviewing resumes and hiring people, that you probably should take the word resume out of your head. You instead should probably think of it more as an activity inventory, more as an indication of what a student has done from the summer before her freshman year of high school to the day they submit their application. Um, students always ask us what should go on this and we start by saying everything. Obviously at some point you'll edit it down to what you feel like is the most pertinent things. But we've heard from readers at UT that a student's depth of experience traveling internationally can oftentimes reflect their comfort in dealing with folks with other point of views. Now, oftentimes one of the things that's surprising to parents is that an expanded resume can be three, five, God forbid, even seven pages for students who've been deeply engaged during their high school year. Now, there is a format to the UT resume, and we won't bore you with it, but the core of it is a student communicating the grade levels they've been involved in activity, how many hours per week and weeks per year, the title, and to some extent, the activities they've been involved in. Now, um, we always encourage students to talk not just about the what and when, but about the how, where they shown impact and initiative. And we also encourage students not to consider leadership only as a formal title in an organization. We've seen again and again a student feel defeated when they do their expanded resume, and then to begin to understand that they've impacted communities they are a part of, not necessarily with a title in a club or a social organization, but instead in the activities that they took the initiative on and that they showed the kind of impact that the University of Texas is looking for in the leaders that they want to admit. So in terms of the expanded resume, these are efforts that we always encourage students to start with. Um, this is the first step, in some ways, the foundation, and it can oftentimes help guide their essay work. One, a couple things, just to go back just for a minute on major that I wanted to mention was, um, while UT offers a first choice and a second choice major, it's really important, and I know this drives people crazy, they only consider the first choice major. The kids that get a look at a second choice major are kids in the top 6%. Outside of that, rarely if ever. And so 
this first choice major choice when you are deciding it is a very big choice if the resume that bob just talked about does not feel like it matches up with engineering and a student wakes up and decides yeah i think i want to be an engineer but that engineering resume to be competitive at a school like cockrell it's got to run deep same with mccombs so that's where you have to go back to what Bob was saying in terms of be a Longhorn. Are there other majors that could meet your needs and maybe you're gonna go on and do that later or you really wanna be a mechanical engineer. But something that is, I really wanna stress because I see people getting tripped up on this is they don't understand it's one, you got one roll of the dice here. So if you don't, it's not like, oh yeah, I think I should just try that because that will be, the student might have gotten in if they had chosen something that more aligned with what they've done. So super important little piece there to think about as you're thinking about major. Because that also, um, when the person asks what's a little different about UT process, that's really different. Most schools are gonna ask you for a first choice and second choice major. And if you don't make it to your first choice, they're gonna consider you for that second choice. So I just wanted to um, to point that out. So as Bob said, the- I know, Lisa, we have, Lisa, we just have one quick question that I think sure. both of us can comment on. And that is, what is fit to choice, what does fit to major mean for a ninth or 10th grader? And I'll, I'll tackle that first. Um, the, the first thing is that we feel like ninth and 10th grade is a perfect time for informational interviews, for exploring aptitudes and possible majors, but there are certainly activities where a student can try on, be it the engineering club at their school, it might be a volunteer opportunity for them to try on a major, and we always encourage students in spring of their sophomore year to at least to begin to have a hypothesis of their major. It influences their choices for classes in their junior year, and it certainly influences choices that they're gonna make in their activity plan. Um, Lisa and I have been really engaged right now with students helping them reset their summer plans. And for rising 10th graders and for rising 11th graders, this is a big consideration if they think that UT will be a primary uh, school on their list. For students who intend to apply for as uh, seniors next year, this has become a major priority for them as they review uh, summer opportunities. Lisa, do you wanna um, speak a little bit from your perspective about how fit to major may influence choices of activities for particularly sophomores and juniors? Sophomores and juniors or freshmen and sophomore? Uh, uh, sorry, uh, freshmen and sophomores. Okay, great. I mean, I, we have to have a time of exploration. I, I'm a counselor by training. A, a student isn't ready to, I mean, we could all argue, we could have philosophical arguments about the way this is set up, but you need those first couple years to explore, to see what you're liking. And so as Bob said, try things on, is really important. It's also why if a student has their eye on UT, you've got to start young, not talking about college all the time and being obsessed with college, but they do need to be on tracking towards, towards having experiences that allow them to try on different types of majors. So I think that's, that's very, very important. And so we don't wanna give up an exploration phase, but as Bob said, by that end of that sophomore year, like I'm working with a sophomore today that I was talking to and he's been still between chemistry and, um, and computer science. He loves both of them. So I'm like, okay, this summer, I want you to do something in both of them. And we're, we're going to have to choose because otherwise he's not going to have time to, you know, have the things that he needs to have. But I definitely think it's important to have that exploration time. You can't just wake up and say, I'm gonna do all these things. You have to try some things. And you know, I had a student who went and did an engineering internship. That means he was in an, in an engineering office and um, he hated it. And then he realized that he wanted to do business. So then he kind of went a different direction. So we're not saying that the kids aren't gonna twist and turn, but it is important in this process that, that this is kind of front and center. One other question that's come up, Lisa, around fit to major, and that is the distinction between applying to McCombs, do you have to articulate business, finance, 
versus some of the engineering specific majors? No, in, 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 in McCombs, you do not. You can, though, in your essays, talk about, and I think it helps you to talk about what you, what you hope to do with that business degree, right? Um, but, but you definitely, you don't have to have that fully laid out, no. And I'm going to tackle one last question, and then we'll head to essays. Now, um, as Lisa said, we can discuss philosophically um, the importance of exploration, and we feel like it's crucial, and so does the University of Texas. They see that as part of a student's story. But um, there's a question sometimes that comes up from, uh, from students or parents, and that is, it, it, what about well-rounded students? And well-rounded and a breadth of experiences are crucial. Because the University of Texas has become so competitive, they actually, in their holistic process, if you think about this for a minute, can afford to look broad and deep. And they're looking for depth either related to an anticipated major or to a student's intellectual curiosity. And so while it isn't the case for every student, as a general rule in our experience over 11 years, the University of Texas would like to see that depth of initiative and impact, not simply a resume or a set of essays that communicate only the breadth of involvement. And I would add, go ahead, go ahead, go ahead. that also, if there's a preference, there's a preference for depth in, 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 in more limited subjects. It is more narrow. It is going to, you know, going to help a student for sure. Great. Lisa, we've had a lot of questions, folks eager to get to what about the essays? So do you okay, want to let's do it. Okay, so we love the essays. Essays is, a, is one of the things we love doing at College Match Point. And again, I think there's a wonderful opportunity here with the essays for the students to um, really show who they are and what they're about. I'm going to kind of overall give you what does a student have to do for their essay so you understand what we're kind of the game plan. First of all, any student applying on Apply Texas, which is the application that a student applies through, writes what a long essay. And the right now, the topic for that is, what is a challenge that you faced in high school and how did you overcome it? Now, cha challenge or opportunity. And you can be super broad with the word challenge and opportunity. We've made almost everything be able to fit into this. They're not really tied to the prompt, what they're tried true, uh, tied to is they want to get to know your student. What makes them tick? Who are they? They want to know about their character. And this is a place where I think adults in their life sometimes um, think, no, 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 tell about all the things on your resume. And that actually that's opposite from what they're really looking for. They want to know your student, understand them, hear their voice, even if it sounds a little clunky, like show a little heart. Those are the kinds of things that really come through in a good long essay that at the end of the day, I learned something about this student. It might have to do with an activity on their resume, although bonus points if it doesn't, but it's like something I didn't see anywhere else. And I'm like, Oh, that's a great kid. You know, I'm rooting for that kid. So that's the, that's the job of the long essay. And every essay in this process has a job. The career, the major essay, which is what do you want to major in and why, is where you are literally making your case. I mean, this is an incredibly important 300 words, which is you, what you want to major in, that first choice major, and why. Like what, and the why is very important that you're bringing in experiences that you've had. So you're bringing evidence in and telling why that, that meant something to the student. So super important. I would say if there's one piece of this whole thing, that's, that's one of them that's right up there with a huge asterisk. The next essay is leadership. And the best leadership essays, as Bob said, have nothing to do with being the president of the student council and being president of the student council is awesome, but is like really understanding what a leader might be. What's a leader in our world right now, right? Like it might be cooking dinner. So, and they tend to like heart stories. I would say in general, UT really wants to, the kind of student they're wanting to admit, there's definitely 
showing character, showing heart, showing thoughtfulness, care of community, all those things are super important. So we've got major, we have leadership, and then we have a community, um, an essay about community that's a little bit about what are you gonna bring to the UT community and how do you, how well can you interact with other people who are different from you? And this one is really like talking about yourself as a community member, but the piece that I see kids missing sometimes is tell them what you wanna do there. Like do your research, what is it, and please don't, you know, other than, you know, be create, you know, like dig in a little bit. Greek life is great, but it's probably not the best thing to say you want the only thing you want to do there, right? What are the things you, what, how's that campus going to be different because you were a student there? You know, how are you going to make your impact there? Those are the kinds of things that we want to talk about in the community essay. So those are the four required pieces of writing. There's a few tiny majors, nursing, and a few others that have an extra essay. But in general, what we're going to talk about tonight, those are the four. There's also, and I want to highlight this because I think it's important, and especially right now, and I'm, they may add a fourth question. I'll be curious to see. Um, but there's an additional information. So let's say that you are an awesome student. Your grades are great. You've done all this great stuff, but you try, you've taken this test a thousand times and you can't do it. You just don't get a good score. Talk about that. Write that in the additional information. Or there was a semester where your grades went down, but there actually something happened in your family, but there's no way they would know that unless you tell them. Or, or on and on, you had a health issue or anything what readers tell us, and this isn't just UT, but it is also UT, is if you don't tell us, we don't know. So your essays are where you're filling in all the detail, the personality. So it's an incredibly big opportunity. And I promise you, they are read. Um, so it's exceptionally important that you are, that a student is answering these thoughtfully, that they're written well, they're not over polished. Um, parents, I know it's tempting to just go on and get the computer out and start writing, but just resist that temptation because you're not doing your student a favor. It should be in the student's voice. It doesn't need to be perfect and it needs to sound like, a, it needs to be grammatically perfect and like that, but it doesn't need to it needs to sound like a 17 year old. That's okay. That's, that's what they are. So the essays are an incredible opportunity. Students never want to do essays the night before it turns in. This is something, one of the things we constantly tell our students, though, they write their draft. They're like, I'm about done. And we're like, oh no, we're just getting warmed up. Like this is dig in and and polish this up to really tell your best story which sometimes mm -hmm. takes a little bit of time and that that's going to really really be you know a positive for the student and help them will it cancel out you know all everything else no it won't but it definitely can add and we saw this year with some kids where we were like wow that essay actually did its job like nobody's business so three quick things to jump in and make a point on. One um, is that uh, parents who either write for a living or have a marketing background oftentimes look at these as being brochures for their daughter or son. And we want to encourage you to put that thought aside. Um, this is not the color commentary of their resume. And in point of fact, in one way, the easiest way to think of it is, this is the replacement for an in-person interview. This is your person, this is your daughter's or son's story that they would communicate rather than a laundry list or an essay that uses words like plethora or myriad. <laughs> um, the, the second thing is, um, and we see this with our essay coaches working with students all the time, you almost need to think of these four essays or the additional one if you use it as a puzzle piece. As Lisa mentioned before, it's not about repetition. It's not about I covered this in my long, I'm covering it again in my major, again in my leadership, and again in community. And it's oftentimes almost the alchemy of making sure those stories fit together so that they, hold, they tell a holistic story for a holistic review. And then the last thing we'd like to point out about these essays is that, um, and a couple of people have asked this, Lisa, can you speak to word count? 
Oh, sure. Okay, so there's a lot of little words um, kind of myths on the street. It can be, the long essay can go 720, 750. We're we'll talking about honors programs in a minute. We do a lot of kids who apply to plan two. And um, so plan two essays tend to do better a little longer um, just because of the type of writing that a student's got to do there. So um, usually our plan two essays are gonna be 700-ish. I would say a standard um, um, long essay is about 650 words, but it's not a hard word count. Um, and then the short answers, the, the three short ones, are 300 words. Great. Okay. So that means you got to work hard to get all that in there in 300 words. Okay, you ready for me to get honors? Yes, ma'am. Okay, great. So... We, I really want to talk a little bit about honors programs because I think, one, UT has some phenomenal honors programs. Most people know about Plan 2, but they may never have heard of polymath, right, which is out of natural sciences. Communications has an honors program. Um, business has an honors program. A few things about the, biz, the UT honors programs that I think are fabulous. We all know that we're talking about an enormous university. So this is a way to bring it down a little bit, make it a little bit smaller, get some smaller classes, get a little more um, professor, you know, interaction earlier. The other thing that people don't realize is it also gives you a second read. So you're, you're read by admissions, as I said at the beginning, in holistic admissions, you, you're, you're, being, you're funneling in through admissions and that's where this comes. But um, if you apply to honors, the honors department also reads you. So if they think you're fabulous and wants you, that gets you another time to get read. So um, most, many, many, many of our students do apply to honors programs. There's probably over 20 of them in the, in the university. So we're certainly not gonna go through all of them. But that is a really important thing when you're thinking about major. So now you've picked that you're in the School of Communications. Well, do I want to also apply to honors within the School of Communications? So that's important. And the honors prompts change every year, and we know they're changing this year, so I don't know those prompts. The writing for honors is very important. The writing, the essay writing that you do for your honors prompts is really important. So. Um, take, sometimes I feel like students just want to do that like in their application. That's another piece that's got to be well thought out because at that point, if honors wants you, it doesn't matter if you're the top student or the one that just slipped in. If you can, if you can, you know, write something compelling, um, that's going to be really, really important. So I definitely encourage students to consider the honors programs. A lot of times students think, oh, I shouldn't apply to honors because I'm probably not even going to get in. And we can tell you story after story of student that, you know, didn't think they were going to get in, got in and got in top honors program. So again, if you're going to do the work, as you can see, as we go through this, it's not a small amount of work to apply to UT, right? Like it's, it's a lot of work. Go on and finish and hit it home there and apply to the honors programs. And one thing I'll just say as an aside is after the student has done all this work, the good news is much of the work that they've done for UT, these questions are very common for other colleges. They can then translate these to other colleges. So it's not like, oh, they just did all this work for UT and now they've got to do all their other colleges. They will have other writing, but this UT package of writing, as we call it, is really going to get them on the road to a lot of writing that they're going to need for their entire college process. So, um, Lisa, Lisa we have a couple of questions sure. before we turn to timeline and then wrap yeah. up. The first one is, if you get denied to an honors application, does it affect your regular uh, application? Oh, absolutely not. No, no. And you can apply to multiple, like most students in liberal arts will apply to liberal arts honors and plan two. So no, it does not. On the trends, one of the parents mentioned that they had been told that there were no appeals accepted this year because they had to move summer admits to fall. Can you speak to that? That's inaccurate. There absolutely were appeals. We've had some. Every, there were not near the number of appeals accepted this year that there was the previous year. So the previous year was an odd year where a lot of appeals got through. There were some appeals. There weren't a ton, um, but there absolutely were appeals. 
And the next question gets to timeline and specifically ask about priority deadline. So can you talk a little bit about timeline? Sure. Okay. So in Texas, we like to start early. So um, that's, I think, an advantage to students, but it often surprises people when we talk to families who are thinking about, you know, the college process is you want that UT um, um, application turned in in August. You really do. Labor Day at the latest. The, I don't care what they say. This is the one place I'll say I don't always think they're, you know, it really does help. And it absolutely doesn't hurt. Now there's two deadlines. Deadlines in UT world, it, the two deadlines really are not very different. One's November 1st, which just, they tell you that you're gonna hear in February, but many times in February, they send you an email to tell you that you've heard that you're not gonna hear till March. So, um, so the timeline, the official timeline is November 1st or December 1st. But what you all, another thing you need to put in your heads, you've got to get this done early. Get it in early. Now, a couple questions that people always have. Well, can I keep testing? Yes, you can test. Um, I don't know. This year, I think some of these dates are going to probably move, would be my guess. But we don't have that confirmed. But you historically have been able to test through the November test, okay? So you could keep updating your file, but you want your application received by them no later than Labor Day if you're really, if you're really aiming hard for UT. That's, that's been the truth for a long time and I'm sticking to it and it, it, it serves students well. So while there's official timeline in UT world, I would say, once that thing opens, you don't I know sometimes people call us and like want to submit on August 1st. That's not necessary, but but you want to get it in there in that that first month, ideally. Understand in timeline, you're getting your your application submitted. Your school controls and you need to make sure you're paying attention to your school when they send your um, transcript. And then, of course, you control when test scores and things like that go. I do expect timelines to move this year, but it doesn't change my biggest piece of advice, which is get that thing in early. It helps so much. Also, just as an aside, it helps your kiddos to get this done before they go back to school. They do such a better job on this work. Lisa, we've had three questions come up. One around um, the honors program. Is there any positive impact if you apply to an honors program at an impacted major? Does it improve my odds in computer science if I apply for Turing? I mean, computer science is three to 4% acceptance rate. Um, probably not. No, I, that, I've never thought about that, but I don't know. I wouldn't. So. Uh, second question around timeline. If you apply by August, then how do you account for activities during the student's fall senior year? Ah, great question. Um, well, what we do with our students, and you certainly can do this at home, is um, the students know usually what they're going to participate in, right? And so we, you just go on and put those things like if they're going to be in band in the fall or they're going to be, you know, running the Chinese club or whatever. Um, we just move forward and put those things in forward dates. And that's very common in college admissions. Now, I mean, I guess if November, October came along and they had added something great, they could have potentially missed that. I can't recall ever thinking of that happening. I think you can do, you could resubmit your resume, but I would say most students, the UT application, whole cycle, you know, when you think about the top 6% and all that is really kind of ending at the junior year, right? Not that you don't include senior year things, but like we have students that do independent studies. So we have them put that in their application, even though they haven't commit completed it yet, they're on the path to getting that going. So we just put those dates. And the last question, Lisa, what role, if any, do grades during a student's fall senior year or full senior year have an impact on their holistic read at the University of Texas at Austin? 
Well, up until this year, unless you truly tanked it, i.e. you started, you know, getting C, you know, if you started going way off, you do have to send your grades. So you have to send the fall grades and final grades. So those could hurt you if you went way off the reservation. Now, I'll talk about COVID for a minute. Almost all admissions people are saying right now that given the situation we're in, they think colleges are going to want some snapshot. So while right now, high schools typically send grades to colleges in um, like late January, I think colleges are going to want to see a snapshot of where the student is around November 1st would be my guess. So, so I think that's going to change a little bit. So yeah, I mean, students got to keep pedaling through senior year. I would say spring, they could maybe let it up a little bit, but you know, yeah, it's, it's all the way to the finish line. Great. Uh, to wrap up, we sure appreciate everybody spending us uh, time with us this evening. We have an extensive guide to applying to the University of Texas at Austin, but that guide is being updated as Lisa mentioned as University of Texas releases any of their anticipated changes for either the essays or deadlines. Once University of Texas releases that, we'll be updating our guide and sharing it broadly. The second thing I'd like to do is in it, invite you, if you're available, uh, next Tuesday evening for a webinar we'll be hosting on summer planning. We released a guide earlier this week and have been working with our um, uh, high school students to look at how to reset their summer plans. Um, the link is here to register for it, or you can email me at bob at collegematchpoint.com. Uh, the webinar will be next Tuesday evening at 6 p.m. We sure appreciate you spending time with us this evening. We hope we've been able to address most of your questions, and we'll be sharing tomorrow or Monday the ar archived video version of this. Thanks so much, and we hope you have a great rest of the evening.